Welcome everybody to uh, the College Open Day here in Trinity College. And also welcome to this lecture which is entitled Nano, dot dot dot, small is different. I'm uh, Oslav Kusic, I'm heading the group of Nano Electronics and Spintronics. I'm lecturer in the School of Physics and I'm also working in uh, this building here, which is the Center for Research on Adaptive Nanostructures and Nano Devices. One announcement. There are several tours through or uh, off physics uh, today where you're going to see uh, this building or the inside of this building, all the labs, but so all the other facilities which we have. They start right after this lecture at 10.35 outside. Uh, and there are of course other later tours and if you want to go to those, please sign in at the physics stand and you get there, if you get out here of the lecture theater, just go down the stairs immediately and straight to your right, you are going to find the stand. Now, a little bit on Trinity College and the School of Physics. It has a great and continued scientific track record in many disciplines uh, in physics. Uh, some of the brightest and best heads in physics in Ireland are wor actually working here. Uh, it's also home of Ernest T.S. Walton, who is the only Irish physicist who ever got the Nobel Prize in 1951 for subatomic particle creation and acceleration. And I still feel it's a little bit like Hogwarts when I see the, uh, all the buildings and also here the, the, the old uh, library of Trinity College. And I invite you also to visit that one. Now, about CRAN, Center for Research on Adaptive Nanostructures and Nanodevices. It's actually first and also largest institute in Ireland, uh, which is entirely, and this is important, entirely dedicated to research and third-level education in nanoscience and nanotechnology, right? Now, small is different. And where does this all come from? You all have probably heard all these words, nanotechnology, nanometer, nanoscience, nanospintronics, nanoelectronics, nanobots, nanoproducts, and so forth. And many of these words you may know, but they all have this prefix nano here. And indeed, you can summarize all that in three words. First one is nano, oh, which means simply small, right? And it's derived from, from the Greek word nanos, which actually means dwarf, dwarfish, or little old man. So, and basically describes to something that which is one billionth of something. So zero point, and then you have eight zeros, and then a one. <laughs> Right? Now, the second word is nanoscience. And this is basically the part of all the sciences, if you want, uh, which focuses to study small things, right? And the curious thing about that is, and actually the, 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 the most interesting thing is, it's neither really physics, it's neither really chemistry, nor it's biology in the classical sense, as you all have experienced it and maybe had it at school or in your daily life. It's some sort of all of that, and I'm going a little bit later to elaborate why this is the case. and makes it actually interesting working in this field. The third word is nanotechnology, which is basically just the art, science, how you address or make things on the nanoscale and all this kind of things, in order that this new material, maybe, right, is making something which is, has not done before. Right? And this includes advantages in all possible industries you can imagine, right? This includes electronics, all the smartphones, which you know, and all the uh, game stations, etc., etc., etc. All that is because of nanoelectronics, because developments in nanoelectronics. Chemistry, same game. Pharmaceutical, same game. You all have probably already been somewhere where there's a little bit more sun and you needed sun cream. And I assure you, you have used nanotechnology there simply because in your sun cream you have nanoparticles inside which are much better to absorb UV light than larger particles, right? So it's already on the market. You're using it. You may not see it, but you're using it. So the question now is, what is actually small, right? Sort of like a relative term. And uh, this, this little journey here is hopefully going to demonstrate what that means. Now, let's start with one meter, and here we have a very beautiful bush of roses. 
And if we maybe look at a scale of 10 centimeters, then we see, oh, this bush of roses is actually made of green leaves. And here maybe in the middle of this green leaf, there's even a fly sitting. Now, if we go a little bit smaller, one centimeter, we see, oh, this fly actually is not just some black greenish dot. Actually, has quite some structure, right? Some big things here in the front and here uh, some, some green stuff in the back. Hmm. Let's look a little bit closer. And this is just one millimeter. And if you had not seen the fly beforehand, and I just show you this image, you would have said, well, it's maybe some exotic fruit. No, it's the eye of the fly. Right? So we can go smaller, 10 to the minus 4. And this is a scanning electron microscopy image of the eye of the fly. And uh, it's just a tool where basically it's working like any optical microscope you may know, but instead of using light, it's using electrons in order to image surfaces. And here you see, you know, a very nice structure, actually, but it's on the scale of 10 to the minus 4 meters. Now we can go smaller, 10 to the minus 5, and we see that in between these uh, little, little uh, hills, which make up the eye of, of the... Uh, of the eyes fly, there are some sticks sticking around. And we can go a little bit more, 10 to the minus 6 meters, and this is actually where the stick comes out. And if I had shown you, just without seeing all the other pictures, just this one here, you would have puzzled probably for a week what this might be. Right? So there's a lot of things to discover if you go slower, uh, smaller, and now we make a jump. We go from 10 to the minus 6, which is 1 micrometer, to 10 to the minus 9, so 3 times smaller. And then we end up, which is one nanometer, 10 to the minus 9 meters. And what you see here is a standard example. This is a DNA, the basis of the life, the living life around us. It has a diameter of approximately 2 nanometers, right? And this is what we would call small. This is the range in which you work if you do research in nanoscience, right? And if you go one step further, so 0 0.1 nanometers, that's one angstrom, or roughly, you can say, one nanometer are approximately 10 atoms. And this is here just one atom. And this is, again, the DNA double helix in another representation. Right? So working in the nano field, what do we see as small? Small, we say, we have only a couple of atoms. We're trying to manipulate them, and we're trying to see if things on this scale behave differently than uh, maybe here uh, on, on the large scale, on the meter scale. So, relatively seen, you can even can say it's a little bit philosophical, but you can say, for us, as a human being, if you look into space, you would say, wow, that's infinitely large. But actually, if you go deeper inside, you know, going tiny and tiny, it also starts to be in a certain sense, infinitely large, if you look in the nano-world. Now, I've shown you what we understand as small. This is where nanotechnology is based, nanosciences. So, small, but why, why, it's, why is it different? And I mentioned already that on, on a previous slide, basically, the following, on such small length scales, the laws of physics, as you know them, as you experience them every, every day, for example, you, you take a, an apple in your hand here and you leave it and it's going to fall down. All these type of little things. Well, all that is macroscopic world. Again, in the macroscopic world, that our day, what our daily life is, we can divide between physics, chemistry and biology. So there's also some classical division in, in physics, if you want. You have classical mechanics, classical electrodynamics, or classi classical thermodynamics, etc., etc., etc. Now, in the microscopic world, which is the nano world, right, you don't have that anymore, you just have science. The reason for that is everything, what is happening there, is entirely determined by so-called quantum mechanics. Okay. What's the story with this quantum mechanics? Well, imagine this is you, as you're sitting here, you just go out, you grab a ball, you take a ball, and you say, well, I want to play. You kick the ball, it's bouncing back. You all know that. You've done, hopefully, that many times when you had been a little bit younger, maybe still today. 
Now, imagine you make yourself very, very, very small. Say nanometer sized. Everything shrinks. You are nanometer sized. The ball is nanometer sized. The wall is nanometer sized. And you start kicking the ball again. And what is happening, or what can happen is, it's not bouncing back. It goes through. It tunnels, the so-called tunneling effect. It tunnels through this wall. It's not always happening. Sometimes it's bouncing back. Sometimes it's going through. This is one of the peculiarities of quantum mechanics. And since quantum mechanics is ruling the nano world, you're going to see these type of effects. And this is one of the reasons where research is, 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 is going to. We want to exploit that. We want to understand that better. And we want, of course, ultimately to bring that maybe into some applications which are useful for something. Right? Now, what are these cornerstones of quantum mechanics? And again, it just says, well, every object, no matter what it is, right, is at the same time a solid material, a corpuscular particle, and a wave. Right? It has all properties of a solid, and it has all properties of a wave. You know? And this is pretty weird. It's hard to understand. And I don't think that everybody ever on this world have understood it. It's just what we observe. But working with that, you always find out it's true. And you have seen the tunnel effect. And I can assure you it's big fun working with that, because you seldomly know what comes out. And very interesting phenomena appear, which indeed, as I said, can lead to smartphones and other things. So another thing uh, which is important here, you cannot just divide things infinitely small, right? There's something like limits. This is something which is called quantization. And uh, this is not only true for the size of objects, but also true for certain properties. For example, the electric charge, right, which is carried by an electron. It's the smallest one which is existing, right? There's no smaller one, and this, it has this well-known value of, of 1.602 10 to minus 19 ampere seconds, right? It's not getting smaller. Right? So there, there are little things like that in this quantum mechanical world, in this nano world, which are really different, right? For us here, you can imagine, oh, I take this chair and I can cut it in smaller and smaller and smaller pieces. No, there's a limit. You cannot do that. Right? And in the nano world, you encounter that limit and you have to work within these limits. And things apparently are then different. Now, again, how to get there for doing all that, you really have to move on the nanoscale, which means you have to work on this scale a few couple of nanometers in order to get there. Now, what is nanoscience? Well, it's basically studying and understanding what things materials do at the nanoscale. Uh, an example which is very fashionable at the moment also is carbon, right? And two types of carbon you all probably know. One which all of you probably had in your hand, just a pen, uh, graphite here in a pencil. And another one which most of girls like is getting diamonds, right? Same material, same type of atom, but arranged in a different way. And you see, apparently, these two guys have completely different physical properties, right? Now, let's look a little bit closer into this graphite thing. So if you do again the scanning electron microscopy image, so we zoom in, so we see, oh, it's actually, it has quite some structure. You zoom further in, you see, well, there seems to be some flakes around. And in fact, these are some hexagonal flakes, right, or layered, uh, uh, monoatomic layers made of carbon atoms, which are in this hexagonal lattice. And here you see we actually are able today to image such layers, right? And what you see here, these dots, these are single atoms, okay? And the resolution nowadays goes even farther, right? This is just here to show you that you also can find this hexagonal lattice uh, in there. So there are methods nowadays and techniques, and they are developing. There's a lot of work also going on in research in order to perfect these types of things. Now, you can imagine now, if you take such a sheet, what can I do with that? And this, these are things which are entirely only possible on the nanoscale for various number of reasons. I don't, cannot go into it, but it's basically if you want to take such a graphene sheet, which is a hexagonal 
monoatomic layer and you want to make it large and say on the meter scale, it's energetically not stable anymore, right? However, on the nanoscale it is, and you can actually roll it up, that it's forming something like which is called a nanotube, which is here a nano, uh, diameter of one nanometer. You can also wrap it up into a so-called fullerene buckyball, which has exactly the same symmetry as a soccer ball, right? So if you look at the black, uh, uh, black patches and white patches, of course you can have maybe you can take several of these guys, different diameter, and stick them here together. So you have something like a Russian doll. Now, there's a lot of things involved in that. It was not only carbon nanotubes, you have controlled synthesis of these guys, right? Which chemists are doing. You can again, here it's a nice image of a carbon nanotube. You start to see the atoms. Here, hopefully you can see it. There's a single nanotube line between two electrodes, right, they, which are approximately 100 nanometer wide, but there are other materials like iron oxides or manganese oxide. You see here the crystal structure is different, you can see the interface. Or here nanowire which is made with a cobalt with a uh, iron oxide shell around it, or here some germanium nanowire which is across trenches, right? And you can measure a lot of things on these things and I assure you they really behave differently than that if you just take a bulk metal or bulk germanium. Uh, uh, piece. Now, an example for nano nanotechnology, which is also very important in, in, our, uh, in our world, is of course electronics, right? I mean, we, we are a society which is based on electronics, on development in electronics. And, well, nanotechnology is sort of like the next, or nanoelectronics is the natural strut. From there, where we have started, which was microelectronics, we get smaller, smaller, smaller and smaller, right? Because we are able to handle it and to understand the physics which is associated with it. Now, this is not just a dream of scientists. This here is a roadmap which uh, a kind person from Intel here in Ireland was giving me. And this is where Intel is working on. So in 2003, they were making already little devices, transistors, which are all in your smartphones or in the TV or wherever it is, or computer which had sizes of around 90 nanometers, 65 nanometers in 2005, 45 nanometers was 2007, 32 nanometers 2009, 2011 and plus, we are here. And this is where we are doing research. Five nano oh sorry, here the image has disappeared. 10 nanometers, three five materials, carbon nanotubes, etc., etc. A lot of effort going into that in understanding the how these small structures work. Remember the tunnel effect. You have to take care about these things. And of course, quantization effect. Right. So, ultimate goal, of course, is to take a couple of atoms and basically start to arrange them so they do something. There is some understanding in doing that. This is just an example where we have atoms on a metal surface and you can basically take these atoms and put one by one into such a nice structure and you here you can even see nice interference images of the electron waves which are lying below. Remember, in quantum mechanics everything has two properties. It has all properties of a solid and all properties of a wave. So it can make waves. Right? But the, point, the actual point is you can take the same type of atom, you can arrange it in a different way so it's actually behaving, doing differently than uh, you know it on your macroscopic scale. And there's a whole lot of work to do and a whole lot of physics to understand uh, in this area. Now, you need a lot of... <coughs> sorry. Uh, uh, there's a lot of more things for that. Uh, you need a lot of fancy and big machines in order to observe that. Funnily enough, the smaller you get, the larger the machine is. You need in order to manipulate it, and this is simply our fingers are simply too large. So we need to find ways to make them smaller. And uh, there are like uh, 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 helium ion microscopes, SEMs, FIBs. Here, for example, this is a structure on which you can measure uh, some electrical transport on one of these nanotubes, right? And you cannot see it maybe very well, but here's some tiny little thing inside, which where's the one, a single nanotube which is connected and we actually took this sample and put it into, uh, cooled it down to minus 200 degrees Celsius and Look what is happening. It's, it's really fun. 
So check all this out. Uh, of course, on the on the Trinity College webpage, Physics Research, but also on the CRAN webpage, cran.tcd.ie. Uh, That's the the, the 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 new center. Of course, also I would like to invite you to look at the Inspire Nano platform, which is a uh, nationwide uh, 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 platform which wants to boost collaboration and education in nanoscience and nanotechnology uh, uh, in, in Ireland, right? There are three main fields where people are, are, are working together, electronics, bio, and, um, uh, uh, and, and, and photonics. And of course, the size matters in a way. And uh, if you have any questions here, I will be very happy to, to, to answer them. Just drop me an email or if there's any other question you have on physics or nanotechnology or other things around physics, just also drop an email to physics at ccd.ie. And again, the reminder of the tours of physics. My colleague is just already standing there waving. Um, I should tell you. We are starting right here at 10.35. I, I strongly invite you to, to go there. You're going to have a lot of fun and a lot of insight in, into, in, into this field. And if it's not suiting you now, there are later tours. Just sign in at the physics stand, and uh, which is go down the stairs and to the right. Hope you enjoyed it and hope you enjoy the day today here in Trinity College. Thanks.